Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are painting a winter cabin scene today. So I have my taped, bordered um, in piece of paper in landscape position and I'm just applying a blue. We're applying our background gradient first. So I want it more concentrated at the top and less concentrated as we gradually move downwards. So, um, but we're only gonna go like two thirds of the way down. So around there. And then that we're gonna leave because uh, it's going to be something else. There is like a piece of some kind of hair or something and I can't get it off. Okay, I think we fixed it. So while that is still wet, um, I'm going to take green and paint it like along the base here. But I do want it to kind of bleed downwards. So I'm, that's why I'm leaning it upside down. Sort of like that and we can pop in some maybe some blue in there as well just for fun And don't worry too much about making that look perfect because we are going to be painting over top of it. I just, I like having a base color there. It makes it so much easier to paint um, details because you don't have to fill in every single white space because you've got a background color there to begin with. So if yours doesn't look like, the, if it looks more blobby like mine does on this side, totally okay. We're going to be painting over it mostly anyway. So don't be too picky with your own painting here. Um, now, the one thing I realized is that I should have made this horizon line. It shouldn't be like uh, so straight because we are going to have like pine trees on top. So, the thing is, this is wet, so as soon as I start painting over it, it's going to bleed out. So I, I'm just going to try, got like very little water, mostly just pigment on my brush to prevent it from spreading out so much. And I just want to make that line less... Um, pronounced like I want it to be a rough line for uh, as if trees are well trees are growing right so I'm just going to preemptively paint before it dries because if it dries then it's it's really going to be like just a harsh line. I'm going to leave the middle though because we're going to be painting like a little cabin if you will there so it 
this is me just being extremely picky. So if you don't feel like putting in the work to do that, don't. <laughs> really, really don't. But in my opinion, it looks way nicer than it did before because it doesn't give me this like pressure to make this area down below more natural looking. If that makes any sense to you. So now I'm, I'm being impatient and I'm not waiting for this to dry, but what you want to do is start filling in all of these areas with your pines. You can have them different heights and styles. I no, I no longer go over how to paint a pine tree in my landscape tutorials because I have so many videos on my channel going over that. So if you're a new viewer, um, please look those up. I've got like honestly so, so many how to paint a pine tree or how to paint an evergreen um, for those that are picky on the linguistics. Uh, but I've also got a Skillshare class that goes over eight different types of pine tree painting techniques. So if you want something even more in depth, then by all means, check that out. I have a, a link in my description for a free trial and then you can, you know, access my tutorial and so many others on Skillshare. So take a gander if you're interested in perhaps improving your ability to paint pine trees. So you can use whatever green that suits you for this part. I am just kind of varying it up a little bit. It's so weird to be painting uh, like winter and Christmas themed paintings in July. I feel like I've said this about a hundred times by now, but I always repeat myself because I don't know if the same people are watching my videos. So I might have a bunch of new, new viewers on this channel and then they're super confused about what I'm talking about. But I made it my goal to pre-film a bunch of videos for the entire year before August so that when I have my baby, I um, don't have to be stressed out about trying to come up with tutorials and film tutorials and whatnot. It'll all just already be there. And so... That's why I am filming December and July, because I'm on, I have five tutorials left, and then I have a five month break, which is crazy. It'll be really nice to be able to focus on other things for a time being, because I feel like all that I've been doing lately is painting, editing, uploading, repeat. And it's constantly on my mind. I can't really fully focus on other tasks because this goal is just constant, constantly in my head. And, you know, like this is one of my jobs. I've put so many years into so many hours unpaid into this channel that, you know, finally I'm being compensated in certain in various ways through this channel so I need to sustain that even when I won't be able to 
um, like that's the beauty of of this is I can I can pre-paint pre-upload have all this and and you guys wouldn't even notice if I didn't say anything so you see how that back I don't know if you can see it as well as I can but that background color that we applied is so helpful like it kind of just adds this layer of pine trees that we didn't even have to paint because it's just there in the background So I'm just tapering my pine trees off as I get closer to the center because I'm going to be, like I said, painting that cabin. And I can always fill in more pine trees later. Uh, I just want to make sure I have space for my cabin first. So I'm going to just pause the pine trees for a moment and paint our little cabin and i'm so tempted to make this cabin red because i mean that's very cute but i think i might compromise and go for something in between like a plum i just have to experiment with the colors that I have available to me on this palette. Oh yeah, that's that's a nice color. So I started using this palette. I mean, in reality, I started using it a month or two ago. But when you see this video, I'll have been using it for a very long time. And I have the link in the description if you're interested, but I love this palette because the colors are so incredibly opaque um just very very impressed after using the same palette for three years on this channel i tried this one and was really amazed with um the opacity of the colors so the link is there if you're interested in picking up your own. They're very affordable for what they are. You get a hundred different colors and they include neon, metallic, eggshell, as well as uh, like 50 normal colors. So I highly, highly recommend it. Clearly since I'm using them over my old palette. So now I'm just painting a rectangle here using like this plum brown color and but brown or or purple or red like it'll all work maroon it's all kind of the same family and I'm overlapping that rectangle just slightly over that horizon line that we painted and I am going to let that kind of dry because we have to paint the roof as well but I need that to be dry before we paint the roof um actually I am going to just take some black and add some shading at the very top because the roof we want it to look like the roof is overlapping And I'm going to actually pick off some of this paint because it's a little bit darker than I was expecting. Okay. So that's nice just have to let that dry and I'm just kind of thinking about what I'm gonna do next um, 
I am debating what we should do now. Because we have to do something here. I think I'm just going to maybe do a mix of green and gray. First, I'll try the gray, see what that looks like. I'm just applying, honestly, I'm applying this gray in random places um, and hoping it looks kind of natural. I'm drying my brush and I'm kind of using the dry brush technique to blend that out a little bit, kind of make it fuzzy looking. Something like that. That's good enough for me, I think. And now we just have to wait for this to dry because we still have quite a few details to add, but it has to be totally dry before we can add those details. So let's dry it. So this should be dry, I hope. We are going to paint two deciduous trees at the front here. Like, I could paint more pine trees, but mm, thinking, thinking, pine trees would be so much easier. But I like the I like the look of deciduous trees in the foreground a lot more. They look more natural. So that's what we're going with. I've taken brown mixed with black, but honestly, it's mostly black. And I'm going to paint one tree trunk starting over here. Oh, actually, I wish I stuck with the brown because the black looks too dark. And you can just start painting branches on your tree. So I'm going to leave that one for now because I'm going to switch to my size quadruple zero brush to do some of the detail branches, but I just want to paint the other tree first. So it's going to be the same thing, like right in the foreground, um, basically doing the exact same thing. So yeah, just switching to the smaller brush, which is also linked in the description. It's a lot of promotion in this video. Um, actually, honestly, I need to check all those links, see if they're still active, because I haven't updated them in years, so... Some of these products might not even be available anymore.
I think that might be a little overkill with the amount of branches and offshoots and whatnot. I don't like how many there are there. So this one will be a little bit more sparse. So, actually, sorry, one more thing is I'm going to take the gray that we used to do this bottom part and I want to just add like a little shadow almost coming from it. Very abstract looking, just like that. And maybe I should add one to the house super rough like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take acrylic paint because it is more opaque and I need a lot of it. So I'm not gonna bother with my watercolor even though the white in this um, watercolor set is very opaque. I'm still just going to proceed with the acrylic. So we're uh, drawing a, my gosh, I can't believe I forget what this shape is called. This is like grade seven math. Quad something. It's not a parallelogram. It has four sides. It's a little bit embarrassing. That just shows you how little you actually use that you learn in school. So the reason why I'm painting it white is because it's supposed to be a snowy roof top. So we can also add snow basically everywhere. So along the base of our house, we can add it to our trees, just where snow would sit in the kind of areas where the branches shoot off. We should have added some to the pine trees as well, which I'm still going to do probably, but I'm just switching. I do not advise to use your watercolor brushes for acrylic paint because they're not meant for it and they ruin them, but I, uh, I do not follow my own advice. I don't have acrylic specific brushes that are this size for this so I'm just going to be very careful to make sure that the acrylic paint does not get into the part where the bristles touch the metal part of the paintbrush 
because that's, in my experience, mostly where the issue light lies when the acrylic paint gets in there and then it kind of dries and spreads your bristles open so you can't use them in the same way. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna try and apply some white to the pine trees. Just a little bit, you don't have to overdo it just so that it doesn't look odd that everything else has snow and your pine trees don't. And um, the other thing I wanted to do is add windows to the painting and a door. A door would probably be helpful. <laughs> So I am going to actually try to put yellow in place of the, like where the window is. So I'm just doing like four dots beside each other in the shape of a window and then I will probably go over that in a moment, like outline it. once that dries, but okay, so while we're waiting for that to dry and do its thing, I am going to grab some watered down acrylic paint and I am going to tap it against a brush to create snow. Because I want it to look like it's snowing. I never have much luck with the when I do this with the acrylic paint. It doesn't really it kind of splatters instead of dotting the page. So, I am going to try the white uh watercolor instead because that I have a lot more luck with. must have something to do with the consistency of the paint. Yeah, see that's way better. Whoops big snowflakes. Okay. So now 
The last thing I want to do is, like I said, outline this area, the window, maybe even the door. Like that and I'm tempted just to put um, a little bit of white on top of the window and the door to make it look like it's snow and uh, you know I'm pretty satisfied with this so I think we're going to stop there and peel this tape off and uh, we've got our snowy winter landscape. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit like, it helps me with the algorithm. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will make sure to see you in the next tutorial.